All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Card Talk. I'm Ryan, joined as always by Tyler and Lou. We've got a lot to get to on today's episode. I know Lou and I are fired up. We've got some some talking points later in the show. I know Tyler just said we we had a heck of a start to the show here just a minute ago. This was a great transition for him. But we're going to start with what's on your mind because I think we've just got so many different talking points here. So, Ty, what's on your mind? You look you look focused, content. Yeah. What's going on? Um, what's on my mind is I'm a little I'm a little tired this morning. It's Tuesday morning, as you can see. The coffee cup's still full. Lou's about halfway down right now. And so by end of show, I feel like I'm going to have a little more juice into me. Um, we also are getting ready to go live with 31 open hires for 1.37 p.m., which should bring the team to around 50 people. Um, so I'm focused on that right now. And uh, I'm contemplating this Neymar gold kaboom PSA nine that I have of just potentially maybe taste in the market, but also maybe holding for world cup next winter. Those are the things that are on my mind today. And also the, the wall does look dark. The wall looks dark today. Low light, a little gray outside going to the U S open tonight. You want to U S open tonight. Yeah. That's cool. Mm, pretty excited about it. Lou, I got to say, I, the straw, I mean, the little sip you just had yeah, reminds nice. me of the Lando Norris F1. Is that uh, what you got the straw? I mean, it looks very similar. I would love to have a straw like that. Lando Norris is my, I would say, idol, but I not not fully there yet. You need the double XL. You need a little it's bit like, more life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> he, like, it holds it at his hip. He, like, the water bottle. He liter- like, they literally do. It's, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> All right. Baloo, what's on your mind? What is on my mind? Um, I went to the Jets game this past weekend. Um, and it was my first like real life taste of NFL f- of football in general in like two and a half years almost. Um is that crazy? Two years. Yeah, it's so crazy. And um I just really enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to football season. I'm feeling confident in the Jets for now and where we stand as a mediocre football team. Um, and Still I'm just excited. Your bet? Wildly confident. He didn't play, but mm. I'm super confident. I miss Sam. Me too. I miss Sam. Me too. Makes me sad. Yeah. It just hit me. I haven't missed Sam until you said you were at at the game. I mean, we're playing against him in a week. I know. It's gonna be tough. Is that who you open up against? Open up against at we're at Carolina to start. At Carolina, yeah. home for New England. Samson go for four hundred and three tutties, Joe Brady. Yeah, we have style. we have the worst corners you've ever seen. It's gonna be bad. I hope he goes off. I really do. So speaking of football, I would say that is what's on my mind. Uh, Ohio State football is really my my pride and joy. Starts Thursday night at Minnesota. Opens up with a Big Ten game on the road Blah. at night with a quarterback that's never started a collegiate game. Who is it? CJ Stroud. You saw the built-in excuses, right, Ty? Yeah, I saw that. Because on going road, to Minnesota on Thursday night, opening up is a testy. Yeah. And the, but wait, the quarterback one was a big. It was a big uh, couching yeah. of like, oh yeah, if we lose, hey, we, we gotta keep it in mind. Yeah. Yeah. We do. Well. You're not wrong. I mean, the goals goals this year, right? Win the Big Ten, definitely beat Michigan, and ideally not lose to Alabama or Clemson in a bowl. That's that's really it. I mean, winning the national title. catching an L to us, so yeah, you could try winning the Big Ten first. <laughs> yeah, Ty, you coming out? Uh, no, I have. I'm a best man in a wedding that weekend. Who's and and my guy is a huge Michigan fan. Bury me. I would definitely with skip. the booking. Bury me with the booking. Yeah, I would definitely skip that weekend. We go to his bachelor party. The, the Saturday night is Penn State Auburn whiteout. College football scheduling has just gotten weird. Like opening Thursday night against Minnesota, we open at Wisconsin. I mean, Saturday's Georgia Clemson. That's insane. Big game for my dogs. Big game. Yeah, lose a dog fan. We're, now. we're a Georgia family now, so I have no choice. Real quick. Yeah, you go, DJ Ukulele is going to go deep. 
It's hey, awesome. real quick, we're gonna do. I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about it when we get to the NFL stuff here soon. We'll do the NFL picks. Let's do. Let's do college football. We don't ever do it. I like it. Final oh, four man. in high. Final four. Let's 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 get some let's get some picks. Who you got? You guys go first. You're saying who's gonna make the playoff? Yep, national title, and then we can do a little Heisman pick. Okay, I've got Penn State. <laughs> <laughs> I've got <laughs> Notre Dame because they always. That's a sneaky pick. People are loving I Notre Dame can't this year. Stand Notre Dame. I. Uh, I really pick. do not like them at all. Anything about Notre Dame, I despise. But I'll say Penn State, Notre Dame. Jeez, this is crappy. Bama and the dogs. I love the dogs. The, the dogs. dogs, baby. It's all about the dogs. dogs. So, yeah, yeah. That's terrible. I'm going I mean, Bama. Clemson, Ohio State, Georgia. Yeah, I would go. Penn State's a, a wild pick. Bama, Clemson, Ohio State. Man. That's really. Oklahoma's an option. Oklahoma. Yeah, I'll take Rattler in Oklahoma. So. Cincinnati's what, a sneaky You just pick. took the preseason top four and put them into the college football playoffs. So mm-hmm. that, that works. That works. Yeah, out. basically. Just making sure. Just making sure. So Ty, who you got in the national title? Who's your national title game? Uh, Penn State got, Notre Dame. Yeah, Penn State Notre Dame. Both SEC teams going down in the first round. Yep. Catching That'd be L. the worst national championship of all time. <laughs> yeah. First off, hold the phone. That would be a massive national championship game for like 1970s dads. Exactly. <laughs> Neither of them have. Well, Notre Dame has been. Notre Dame is the most fake relevant team in the world. They haven't won anything yet. Somehow I, every year. I they're agree. Like, they're the they're the fair. fakest popular fair. team of all time. Uh, Payout, they get, like, get to the big game and lose every time. I mean, and they're, they're uh, never worthwhile being in the. They game. lose to USC every year. It feels. When like. is the last every time Notre game. Dame has won a BCS type bowl? I think they're zero and seven in the last seven. I don't think that, like it's been a while. I Listen, Irish dads yeah. across the country are fuming right now, <laughs> but they stink. Notre Dame's not a good program. If they mm-hmm. weren't called Notre Dame, they'd be like correct. Ranking Notre Dame Boise. by eight straight losses yeah. in big bowl games. I think Boise State has a BCS bowl win since Notre Dame got their last one because I think they beat Oklahoma with Statue of Liberty. Mm-hmm. Statue, stink. what a moment in time. Do you remember who the quarterback was in that game? Boise? Uh, for Statue of Liberty? Isn't he the coordinator for the what's it called now? For the Cowboys now? No. Was it? I don't think it was. I thought it was Jared Kellen Zabrana. Moore? I thought it was no, Kellen, it was Kellen Moore. Moore. Was it? Did Kellen Moore take over for him? Are you sure it wasn't a Jared Zabranek? We were getting Kellen Moore. Look it up. From I Jared, was- Zabr- Jared Zabranek. It's a deep ball. <laughs> yeah. Jared and the running back was Ian Johnson, I think. Because he proposed to his girlfriend. It, after by the way, it was he Jared Zabransky. It was Jared Zabransky like and that. Ian Johnson. Ryan has a weird knowledge. Ryan's I'm telling like you guys, that. the college football, that is my stuff. I We could do it all day. I Jared thought it was Zabranski. Kellen Moore just because. No, nah, Kellen Moore was after now. that. Zabransky was drafted in 06 or 07. So that would have been the 06, what, Sugar Bowl? Interesting. That's what the YouTube video needs to title needs to be. Jared Zabranek to Ian Johnson. <laughs> to beat Oklahoma. All right. Are we doing NFL predictions? Wait, or wait, 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 Lou. You use your national title. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm going to do a rematch of tonight's uh, of this weekend's game. Clemson, Georgia. Mm. I'm going to go Ohio State, Alabama. Again, it's a fair pick. Ty Heisman Trophy. Uh, my Heisman Trophy winner. Noah Kane. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a homer. What can I say? For those that are listening, that is Penn State's running back. Yes, Lou. Who are you feeling? I'm going DJ. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. That's a tough pick. Um, it's like DJ Rattler or, or like right. Yeah, those are the top two. Then it would uh, Stroud's fourth. 
I would assume Bryce Young's up there. I don't know anybody. So, um, running. Oh man, there's a couple good. Ones. Um, man, I don't want to pick DJ because you picked him. That's probably my, who I would have picked. Um, right pick. I'll say Bryce Young, Alabama quarterback. I think he's going to be good. All right, let's get into breaking news. Breaking news. Cam Newton has been released by the New England Patriots. Let's go, baby. Mac Jones season is here. Mac Jones is the starting quarterback for the New England Patriots. Cam just got released. Breaking news. That is breaking news. The podcast is paused. The podcast is paused. It just broke live. Ryan is panicking. I'm here to talk to the people. It means nothing. Mac Jones is bad. And so it won't make a difference. Wow. I don't know how I feel about this. I was a little excited. Wow, first, right. Maybe I'm not. He's not Why excited. Why you guys release him? For the people listening on audio, the Ryan's Patriots make a lot not- of like crazy decisions. They just they do things different. It's Belichick. He's kind of nuts. He's lost his touch. Makes no sense. He's, He's lost his touch. It's a real shame. He said trade. Jay said trading for Deshaun Watson. Watch. No, no way. I'm How upset saying. would you be, Lou? Be honest. How upset would if you be? If they traded for Deshaun? Yeah. I wouldn't be upset. He's not going to play this year, I don't think. Really? You don't think so? No, I don't think so. I don't yeah. think they're going to trade him, number one. But oh, I, 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 I thought the Miami him. thing was going to happen over the weekend. And after that didn't happen, I think that was kind of smoke and mirrors from Watson's camp. I don't think they're going to trade him. Gotcha. Yeah, interesting. Mac Jones versus Zach Wilson in week two, baby. 2021. Oh, can't wait. Wow. Mac Jones is going to be bad. Cam one year was ago, really bad, so it's not like... Sure. Cam Newton did not look very good, man. Cam one year Newton's- ago today, if you would have told me that the Jets would be playing the Patriots and it would be Zach Wilson versus Mac Jones, I would have thrown up on myself. <laughs> so good. We'd have probably asked you. Honestly, would have said, who? Yeah, I don't even know. I didn't even know who Zach Wilson was a year ago. Right, he wasn't on... I mean, that's, that's wild. All, All right, right, so well, let's see. Are Mac Jones cards ripping on eBay right now? What is it? Four minutes ago. And what is it? Like elite? Elite, gold standard, elements, leaf flash, leaf ultimate draft, leaf. Someone was showing me element. Is is that like a good set? Oh, it's your middle, middle tier product. It's only got like like a, would you call it like a B minus set? Yeah. Okay. Two autos, a jersey, every card's numbered. Every card's numbered. Every single card's numbered. There's only like six cards a box. Oh, okay. it's a one pack rip. Got it. So why we're on the topic of the NFL? Ty had to stop. Sorry, guys. He was like, for those that are listening on audio, Ty was like making hand hand motions. He was doing so while we're on the topic of NFL, mm-hmm. we, we've got a. Well, let's just talk, right? We're gonna do predictions when Ty gets back, but. You know, is this an every? I gotta be honest. Is this an every year thing for the Jets, Lou? Be honest. It's like every year. Do you have this much optimism, or is it just this year? So, I'll I'll tell you. Um, I so my Jets fandom is wrapped in. It's cloaked in failure. We've been bad my entire life. Outside of two, there was a two year stretch where we were good. Oh nine and ten. Eleven, we were okay. That was it. Twenty fifteen, we had a decently. Okay, season, but that was it. Was that like so, Bart Scott, like AFC title? 2009, game? 2010 was Bart Scott, Sanchez, Revis, that whole, like when Revis was out of control, all that. So that's my only success I know in football. So I used to be a negative Nancy because my dad is the neg- most negative person of all time. He hates everything, no matter what happens, it's all bad. Black cloud over the Jets, blah, blah, blah. So I instead choose to just have fun and be optimistic because, like, who cares? What's the big deal? We're really bad. We might be good. So that way, when we're good, it's gonna be extra fun. When we finally are good, it'll be really fun. So I grew up in Columbus, right? And growing up in Columbus and going to school with ninety percent Browns fans every year for twenty years, right? It was this is the Browns year. Browns got it this year. Brady yeah. Quinn's Brady Quinn's the answer. Derek this Anderson, year. he's the answer. Johnny Manziel is the answer. It's more right? fun way. Yeah, it's just like I heard it for so long, and I'm just like, you'd get halfway into the, the season, the Browns won, you know, one game, and you're like, yes, year. 
you know what's not fun? Being like, oh, this is so stupid. Who cares? They suck. What's the point? About what? Just about being a fan. Like, yeah, a fan. It's not fun to be like super negative. I agree. Well, that's why I pick Penn State to make the chip. It's like, what am I not going to pick them to make the chip? Yeah. Yeah. But it's all. Yeah. I mean, it's a little. College is a little bit different than NFL, though. Because like college, if I get buried by Wisco on Saturday, it's like we're not going to the chip. Like, you know what I mean? It was like, so. And no, I'm not going to sit here and pick Ohio State to make the playoff. Sorry. Never. Ty, if you could have any of your perf- – Penn State. That's what I thought you'd say. No, yeah, Lou would be the Jets. Even. It's not even – Lou, close. any any team wins – of your team's wins, you picking the Jets? Any of my team – Yeah, like any of your team's win, go to win a title. You taking the Jets? I could pick one? Yeah. Jets for sure. I already have an Astros one. I don't, you, even, I don't even have the ability to understand what it would mean, what it would feel like to make the playoff. Like, I, I don't. With Penn State. Yeah. You've made yeah. it, what, one time? No. They, never made it. The they got jobbed the year that they beat Penn, Ohio State. Ohio State went on, which was like okay-ish. Then the next year, I think the opposite thing happened. But the next year, we were up 10 on, or 13 on you guys 10 minutes ago. Olave catches that ball. Cruises down the freaking field. Wasn't it Olave? It was Garrett Wilson, or it I was uh, Olave scored the ben- first one. Well, was, no, it was As Benjamin Victor. It was Where, Benjamin was Victor? It Benjamin Victor? Where like, he caught it. Yeah, like no, that. reaching like this. Tried to undercut him and he reaching sideways. Him. Went yeah. behind. Yeah, yeah. Olave wasn't there. It was it was Victor. I thought it was Olave. For some yeah, it was reason. like, and then you guys came to Ohio State one versus two the year I had, or like two versus four. I had season tickets that year and sold that game because we had lost to Oklahoma. It's been and like battles. Barkley takes the. Barkley takes the opening kickback, and I'm like, dude, we're done. We're getting smoked. I'm like, two lost season. We're not winning the Big Ten. I just hope we beat Michigan. Nah. And we came back. The best game, yep. top five Ohio State game I've ever watched. Yes. Yeah, it was, it was uh, awesome. Gut wrenching. So, right. yeah, I don't even know the joy that I would. I would actually probably be sad in a weird way if they won, because then it's like, I, that, I never need to watch college football. Brian doesn't know what this, fe- what doesn't know this feeling. No. But the feeling of when you win, the sadness that comes after is very real. There's real sadness in getting to the top of the mountain. Ryan just wins and wins again. Wins it again. exists. There's real uh, sadness. We lost to Alabama. We got smoked on national television. That's true. You're drowning in Super Bowls. Like it doesn't you don't have the you don't know you don't know the feeling. We had Cam Newton last year. I'm starting to realize it more and more. You did. Yeah. You did. You did have Cam Newton. Um all right. Wait, wait, wait. While we're on the topic, we got we got to talk about it, right? So, Ty, I was asking Lou about his optimism. Is it always that way for the Jets? Let, let's. Who are we picking to to go to the the Super Bowl? We're doing this right now. Uh, yep. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Defensive Rookie of the Year, and MVP. Let's do it quick. Okay. Who's going first? I'll um, go first. All right. So, Super Bowl, yep. Chiefs, MVP. Mahomes, offensive rookie of the year, Zach Wilson, defensive rookie. That's actually a, a decent pick. Uh, defensive rookie of the year. Need an NFC Super Bowl team in the Super Bowl for the content. Oh, shit. Um, hang on. Um, mm, NFL. Mm, really? An NFC team in the Super Bowl. Um, I have a sneaky pick. Please don't pick my pick. I am taking the Bears no, to be the NFC team, team in the Super Bowl. I love the pick, but not my pick. Very, very good. That's a good pick. Thank you. That's a great. It's pick. gonna be like really it. hard for Zach Wilson and Rookie of the Year while Justin Fields goes to the Super Bowl, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> the Bears stink. You stink. All right, so Ty, what are you thinking? I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I can go uh, if you're still looking. Uh, you can go if you're dialed in. All right. So, I was thinking about this. I'm like, who do I want to take out of the NFC? Right, Lou's p- thinking. I'm like, you know what? The Seahawks seem like a decent pick. Doesn't seem bad. I like Russell Wilson. You know who I'm going to take to go to the Super Bowl, even with no running back? The Rams. It's a good one. I like I found Stafford. Out, 
I have I found out today that or yesterday that Austin Eckler is like a really good fantasy person. Yeah, I had mm-hmm. no idea. Mm-hmm. He got. Uh, I'm gonna go. Hurt? What Ty? Is an Eckler hurt? I don't know. No clue. Okay, keep going. So I'm gonna go. I like I like the Rams. Um, man, there's oh, the AFC is tough. Maybe Mac Jones takes us this year. Maybe not. Um, just to be different from Lou, because I, I mean I like the Chiefs a lot. That's obviously a tough one to bet against. I would honestly, J.K. Dobbins doesn't get hurt. I'd set the Ravens. That's a good one. Let's let's go out on a limb. Let's say Browns Rams. The Browns, Browns Rams, talented team on paper, man. If Baker doesn't play that bad, like the Browns are good, they got a lot of talent. So I'm gonna go Browns Rams, um, offensive rookie of the year. I'm gonna go Trevor Lawrence. That's Fair Trevor pass. Lawrence is gonna do big things. Um, defensive rookie of the year. I'm going uh, Micah Parsons, Dallas, okay. um, former Big Ten standout. Um, and then MVP, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Matt Stafford. I like uh, Stafford this year in in LA. Oh, I didn't pick a defensive guy. I'm doing uh, Patrick Sertan. Hmm, it's a miss. I'm gonna do a Titans Bucks Super Bowl. That's a miss. Titans Bucks. <laughs> He's gonna life. die on that Tannehill pick. Titans Bucks Super Bowl. I got. My MVP. Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill. My MVP is going to be uh, my. Wow. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it. It's going to be Brady. My MVP is going to be Brady, unfortunately. Um. My rookie of the year is going to be your boy, Rye. Fields? Yep. Justin Fields. I like him. I think he's a total gamer. And my defensive is going to be my boy. Parsons. Parsons. Yeah. Yeah. Parsons is a good one. Out of control. Yeah. Yeah, Hopefully he doesn't get hurt, but this now Lou Lou, you'll you send this to us. This is funny for all those that are watching for visual. It says Cam Newton heading to Bishop Sycamore. <laughs> so that's that online that? school that got to play uh, like the ESPN thing that got yeah, oh the, yeah, the Bishop Sycamore story is crazy. We can't do that here, but that's a wild the that's coach has that, like an arre- the coach has an arrest out for their a warrant out for their arrest. The coach really it's crazy. It's nuts. That's amazing. Yeah, it was wild. So, all right, yeah, I don't feel great about my picks. Felt better last year. Obviously taking Rodgers and Herbert, but. <laughs> you nailed it. We'll see. You I mean, Matt Stafford is not as much of like a stretch as Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, I think we skipped out on the Rodgers. I don't know. Here, Stafford MVP. like has to unlearn a million things to be really good. Disagree with that. Clearly. Tano has to learn a lot of things to be good. Look at their last three seasons against each other. I Derrick Henry has 2,000 yards. And Matt Stafford turns the ball over like it's his job. Brother, he played in Detroit. He's going to dudes you never heard of. They played for Bishop Sycamore. You never heard of Calvin Johnson? Calvin Johnson retired 10 years ago. I don't care. Still threw him the ball. Okay, it was like seven that, years man. ago, but still. Kenny, wasn't he throwing it to Who's he th- Galladay or Galloway or whatever that dude's name Kenny was? Kenny G was hurt, brother. He played like six games. Who else? Name one more. I'm just saying to win a Super Bowl. Name the not, next not guy the ball over. Matt to. Matty Staff. Hey, Siri, how many times has Matt Stafford turned the ball over a quarter? On average, one point time, one, one time a quarter? God, that's interesting. <laughs> Stop. All right, so we've got uh, – we're going with the NFL. Picks locked in there. Hopefully, I win another year in a row of that. <laughs> but I was in uh, I was in Dallas this weekend. You guys skipped yeah. that. I uh, we did. I was passed out. I just need a little. Couldn't do it. Just couldn't get back down to Dallas. I don't want to call Dallas my second home, and I had to sign a piece of paper that said it was my second home if I went back. So I couldn't do it. Gotcha. 
Yeah. Did you guys see anything on social about it? Anything that piqued your interest? Or you're like, no, nope, I was following you. No, I wish I was there. Post mortem. Looks like a blast. There's nothing better than being. Did you didn't set up though, right? No. How'd it go? Can we get a little breakdown? Oh. Uh, it was fun. I had a blast, right? So I didn't set up. Um, I think if you set up, you would say attendance was slower, right? Uh, I think that's probably fair. At this point, things are open back up. People are going back to school. Um, it, it's not really a surprise attendance was down. The national was also three weeks ago, so can't uh, you know when it happened? I can't say I'm super surprised there. Um, but yeah, I had a blast. I I love that show. I've been pro Dallas for for yeah, a while. Since we've started going to that, um, I really enjoyed it. So I had a, I had a ton of fun. Made some plays, made nice. some plays. Gonna drop a video here on YouTube. One of our vlogs was going through a quarter box. Ended up being twenty cents because it was five for a dollar. Gonna make a little video about like, hey, what I look for in the dollar boxes, right? Talk a little bit about, um, you know, why this or why that. And as I was going through one of the the quarter boxes. I found a 97 Skybox Rubies out of 50 of uh, Ted Johnson for the Patriots. Old school 90s insert numbered out of 50. That's beautiful. Yeah, I was shown in a quarter box. So that was pretty cool. Um, was it your content? I saw someone at a video that was like found a Mahomes rookie in a dollar box. Yeah, I dropped it yesterday. Yeah, my dad sent me that. <laughs> That's a good job. Look at Rye leveling up the content. Your dad sent you that video. I, I'll show it's you the a good piece of content. That's like the crazy. headline's good. It's like wow. I actually spent twenty minutes trying to think of a title and couldn't think of something, and then I was like, "Boom, this is it." You nailed it. But I made it like it's not. It's not like clickbait. I actually did find him a home rookie in a dollar box. I I get it. That's the text right there. Of the tweet. And then he buried <laughs> you right under. <laughs> I, just didn't want to, I didn't want to reveal our conversation about F one. <laughs> I said Ryan is for that one. Yeah, so Dallas, Dallas was a move. Found him a Holmes working dollar box. Found that in a quarter box. Had a blast. Like I said, love that show. They do a great job with it. Excited to go back next time. Hopefully you guys are there. You know, it'll be in heart of football season. Tyler's got weddings. Um you, you know what, Tyler? I don't you won't be there because I think the next Dallas show is the same weekend as Ohio State Penn State. And I said, because it's Halloween weekend. And I was like, if it's that weekend, I might go for Thursday and Friday, but I'll be at Ohio State, Penn State, so I'm definitely not going to stay for Saturday. Wait, Penn State, Ohio State is not Ohio, not uh, Halloween weekend. Isn't it the thirtieth? No, I think it's it, 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 it. It's either twenty second or the twenty. I think it's the thirtieth. What? I'm almost positive it's the. Yeah, it is. It's a beautiful thing. So are you free? Yeah, he might be back. Lou, Tyler, and Ryan at Ohio State, Penn State. I got invited to this now. I'm yeah, in. <laughs> I'll get the tickets. If I you thought come. that was you guys' thing. And say Michigan's November 13th. I'm a mess. Yeah, you're out of control. I've officially cool. disavowed Michigan. So, disavow. Oh, really? Disavow. Lou, we'll offer an exchange program for anything you want to trade in for Michigan. We'll honor the same thing in Ohio State. I'll Don't, pre- do, it. Don't do it. Don't no, do no, it. No, no, no. I'm George. I'm, we're a Georgia family now. My sister went to Georgia, so now I yeah, have to right. root for you're Georgia. Right. I can. Yeah. I can live with that. Go dogs. I have to do that. And Lafayette, my brother committed there. So, like Patriot League sports, I'm in. I respect Patriot League sports. Some good lacrosse. You should start pulling for following their lacrosse teams. Uh, I'm in. So the time might be in. Dallas was fun, but Lou, what what kind of was there anything different there? Were you looking for F one there? I did make some. I sent you text. I understand. I'm trying to for the people, yeah, for the people that I'm, didn't see the text. Yeah, there was no a guy. Us. Um, I don't know his name. Who's they were? They were a great table. They were right in the back. They were like right where we set up. You know, like where we typically it, set up. It wasn't Plaza. Was it Plaza? No, I think he was right next to them. I don't. I've never like formally met him, but uh-huh. I, there was a guy with some cool F one stuff. So I assume that I and somebody mentioned he was there. So I think that's who it was. Uh-huh. He had like a Lando Norris orange auto, um, a Lewis printing plate one on one. He had some really cool stuff. That's sick. But next to them, they had uh, I'd never met him before, but they had like team bags full of like all these different guys and they were priced like $8 each, $6 each, $5 each, $10 each, whatever. So like I'm going through and I'm like pulling out all the Lewis, all the Verstappen, Russell, Lando. And I'm like, Hey, what can we do on all these? 
and I, I found some some numbered some numbered Lewis stuff. Um, ended up making a huge play with probably 50, 60 cards. Um, gave me a fair price on them. Bought all of those. Went back the next day and bought a Leclerc. Is that Leclerc? Leclerc. The people who like Leclerc, Leclerc are going to tell you Leclerc. Leclerc. Is Leclerc. It's Leclerc. Leclerc. That guy. I bought an orange sapphire at a 25. Wow. Nice. Um, so yeah, I bought some cool stuff. There was no, like I wanted to buy a nice auto. That's still what I could just want one autograph. Um, hopefully dynasty, but there's just, there was not a lot there. Um, yeah. The thing with dynasty is you want to talk about limited F1 dynasty, like driver cards are really hard to find. Like, I have really hard. I, I have one box of F1. I've Dynasty. seen one Lewis Hamilton Dynasty in person. I have one box and it is ripping me up inside to not. You open can't open box. it. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get crushed. Don't open it because because you know there's like dry there's like principal cards and like you like all the they they fill. Do you know up. how bad I want to open it? I mean, go for it if you want. I just think I, you're gonna I get want smashed. to, but I'm not going to. I think you're gonna get smashed if you open it. Yeah, the the chances are not good, but I'm still like. It, it could be the one one Lewis. You know, actually, that got pulled. I'm pretty sure. But so let's talk about your F1 thing. Talk to me. What? Let me ask you two questions. My first question is, why didn't you just believe me when I told you? And then my follow up question is, what piqued your interest? Yeah. So when you told me originally, didn't know anything about it. Still don't know a ton about it, but definitely learning and, and interested in learning. Um. I so I started watching Drive to Survive. Mm-hmm. I started at season one. I know you started at season three to learn more of like the newer stuff. I started at season one. Just wanted to like chronological order. Want to learn the history and like at least three years ago history. Um, and and what made you watch the first episode? Um, well, Lou's talked about it nonstop, and mm-hmm. I'm just I, I'm intrigued. I told Lou the production aspect of the cards is super intriguing. Um, Why, especially, you think F1 cards are very, very well produced? Uh, no, underproduced, underproduced, understood the lack it, of supply Yeah, in a modern, in, in a market. modern market where there's definitely not a shortage of brands or products or v- number of cards comparatively, mm-hmm. it's a major deal. Um, you have tops Chrome, which has serial numbered cards. So it has a limited production case count. And and Sapphire, which, uh, from my understanding, has numbered cards as well in each box, which would also lead to a number of cards in the checklist, number of potential numbered cards, limited supply. That there's no retail, there's no blaster box, there's no mega. the The limited production is definitely what intrigues me. On top of it, as you start to get into it more, you realize they're on every continent. Like you start with F, well, you start with the the drive to survive, and they're in Aust- they're in Australia. Then they go to Spain. It's global, right? This isn't just like one part of the world. This is all over. Uh, yeah, it's just like I watched started watching a race, and I'm like, this is super interesting. They're like teammates crashing into each other. Like I'm just, I don't know what it is, but I'm like so fascinated to learn about it. Um, it's just something I don't know much about. So um, yeah, I'm I'm excited to learn about it and just yeah. Are you hooked? That's, yeah, I'm hooked. Right. Did you know that the Sapphire was Montgomery Club only? Yeah. Yeah. That's how all Sapphire what's is. That, what's that mean? So it's like a top. I don't know a ton about it, but like top sells these memberships. They're called Montgomery Club where you get access to like certain online releases or Sapphire, like Bowman Sapphire, Topps Chrome Sapphire for soccer, Topps Chrome Sapphire for F1. So like the Montgomery Club is like one of the, like think of having an allocation, being able to get Sapphire at cost through this membership, it's like one of the top perks you could have in cards. You could never get a case of Sapphire F1. doesn't exist. I, I want to make a False. comment. A guy told me gonna... he sold two of them at the show. They're 10 box cases. Two That's of them the at first the person I've ever heard of who had a case of He had of two of them he sold. Again, unless he's lying to me. But is it is it a sealed case or did they ship him a case because he bought 10? It's different. Uh, I think it's a, a sealed Then there's a case hit. I would, if anyone that's the F1 guy out there, guy or gal, all the that people knows I've about talked it, to have told me that there's no such thing as a sealed F1 Sapphire case. What were you saying, Ty? 
I mean, just this Montgomery Club thing. Where uh, I mean, crazy. just when we started one. talking about this, I was like, you know, who's do super upset about fanatics? People in the Montgomery Club. Oh, they're devastated. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Montgomery Club people are pissed. I mean, talk about an awesome perk. I wish I yeah. had one. So I, Same. I just want to say to the people, because there's still people out there who think F1 is a quote-unquote fake pumped market. There's no interest, blah, blah, blah. Brian Johnson is sitting here telling you, like, just, I, I get I'm it if telling, you don't. I'm not telling I'm anyone anything. All yeah, I'm I want saying to put words is in I'm intrigued by it. Well, what I loved is how Ryan was intrigued by the market based on real factors, lack of supply, early entry, like kind of thing bubbling up. And then you pair it with, okay, because he could have turned on Drive to Survive and been like, this is what, like, this is not interesting to me. That, that could have been the next move. Totally. Right? And then he could have played it as, uh, okay, like I'm in the hobby. I see this, this is part of my business. I understand the market. But what I'm hearing is, he then turned it, it, it said, okay, let me see about this, and is enthralled by the actual sport. And see, I'm like, so, and just to keep in mind, F1, super intrigued by. NFTs, still don't do nothing for me. Yeah. Doesn't, want super nothing tight. to do with it. Want nothing to do with it. I don't have any interest in it. I see everybody on Twitter's buying one now. Uh, Bored Apes, like, super cool. Does nothing for me. F1, I'm like, hey, I'm, what? Can I tell you a story? Yes. Um, I bought a Is board a ape. yeah it's for um it just everyone's insight into myself i'm joking with you i bought a board ape for seven ethereum which cost me probably about uh, seven it was probably like 2900 cost me like around uh 20 grand to buy this thing uh 16 days later i sold it for 12.5 ethereum uh i made about fifteen thousand dollars profit in 16 days pre-tax wait for it that was 12.5. So I think I sold it uh, for around like 37, uh, 38 grand, maybe something like that. Um, and that ape currently has an offer for $175,000 on it. Pain. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Holy I, can, I can stare at it. Wow. I can see it. And uh, I just want everyone to have that context. As I talk about NFTs and everything and sports cards and this and that and plays that could be made, I live with that on a daily basis. A lot of times I go to it for pure pain in my eyes. I stare at it. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I mean, I sold three Mahomes National Treasures 9.5s for three grand a piece. They're probably $200,000 a piece now. <laughs> but again, it's what you do with that money, right? And how, it you know, just hurts. Yeah. <laughs> it's pain. But it's to every be decision game, you got to be game. Every decision you ever, I always say this, every decision I ever made to sell something or buy something got me right here and I feel really good right here. So I'll That's never really look good. back and say, dang, if I would, would have kept Mahomes because knowing my luck, I'd have kept him and he would have never done anything, yeah. right? So I did keep a little bit. Now I'm like, I'm, every decision I made got me right here and I feel really good right here. Yeah, and I bring it up because um, whether it's cards or, you know, kind of, the perception maybe of myself and how I think about cards and um, my takes on the Panini stuff and people thinking like, blah, 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 like I don't care about certain things. And then NFTs, everyone just like, shit. if you, if you buy, you make a lot of money and you can't lose like, no, to commit yourself to whether it's cards or all this stuff, like invest, like t t it's time. real and you got to be able to stomach it and stay in the mix. I don't want to get too far off traffic. Just quick, quick hitter. What is different about the run-up on NFTs versus the run-up we saw on cards or Top Shot? So I'll stay with cards first and foremost is that uh, the the difference in I think the run-up is one, just the underlying tech and the ability to innovate. It's so new. It's being deployed against currently right now like collectibles like people know about the board apes and then it goes all on down cool cats and then just keeps going now there's like ones for point one and those will rise whatever uh but it's an entirely new like industry like damien hurst who is an artist that has sold actual real like physical paintings at big auction houses is using this and so those kind of um 
collectors are coming into it. I, I would just say the difference is that there's not necessarily a finite form of innovation in NFTs versus where cards was. Like at some point, all you can do in cards, there's a finite amount of licenses that people really care about. And there's a finite amount of supply that can really be printed, right? You can't, there's not too much we're going to go in terms of innovation around cards, physical, whereas NFTs with the utility, with these tokens, access, community, there's just a million different things that can happen. So I think demand can continue to increase, whereas like sports cards are around sports. You know, you're not getting a, a Tom Sachs or calls for calls, take calls, for example. Calls isn't making a card to get graded by PSA. That's an entirely like different market. So I think there's more demand and there's more longevity in terms of the innovation around it. Top Shot uh, is different because they're kind of in the same world. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to go too far off, but they just flooded with supply, crazy supply, supply, supply. But one of the real things that I think happened within Top Shot, or at least from my perspective, I'm not close enough to Top Shot to say one or the other. I think it's created an amazing community. I think a lot of people are into it. And I think that they're going to continue to innovate on what it means to own a Top Shot. But for a long period of time, if you made a, if you made on paper $100,000 in Top Shot, you couldn't actually get your money. And I think that had a real detriment to the whole thing. Yeah, not being able to be liquid with it makes it unreal. Can I make a quick comment? I think only Tyler's gonna understand this. The Tom Sachs rocket launch, like no, I think the, the whole product is actually very, very interesting. The launch they did in the park where they were shooting off little rockets was a little ridiculous. <laughs> it left a little to be desired. I, I don't disagree with you. Okay, that's all. So so what I will say though is everyone that was there now i don't know if it's like because they wanted to be more everyone that was there has said the other side that i've talked to everyone that was there said it was amazing form of community meeting people you got this all world artist right here and people that had rockets that launched them were pumped generally people I that weren't there i think the takeaway is like wasn't that special so i'm just putting that out there I am not going to be the person who attacks and shits on Tom Sachs for anything. It's a little, it's a, they were little teeny tiny rockets. That's it. All right. Yeah, We've uh, got to move on. We're a good bit in shout out to everybody. Who's uh, who's made it this far in the episode, but we're going to get into play of the week as we get ready to wrap this episode up. So again, play of the week is brought to you by eBay. Your number one stop for all things, cards and collectibles. I would say if you're new here, but honestly, we're we're 15 episodes into Play of the Week. You've probably understood what's going on at this point, so we're just going to get right into it today. Now, I don't know what this is. So this is 1992 Grid Formula 1. I'll read it. So Wire 1515. Uh, I've been listening for two weeks, finally started following. My Play of the Week took place back in June, went to an LCS and found the 1992 Grid Formula 1 racing card set for $5. And after hearing people talk about how Formula 1 racing racing card market was taken and off i picked it up then i looked up looked it up on ebay and saw they were going for close to 300 dollars a set i put it up for buy it now for 285 and it sold within eight hours of listing after fees and shipping about a 250 dollars profit um so right michael schumacher is considered to be the, the grandfather of f1 he's like the, the best of all time after lewis now in my opinion like, but, jo like jordan yeah, think of it like that. That's a fair way to think of it. Um, so his card was in this set. Apparently, the card actually tends at a pretty decent rate. Um, so you can grab the you can grab this set for two eighty five, three hundred bucks. You get it graded. I think I'm pretty sure Schumacher's are doing around five hundred, but we could check on that. Good job yeah, by I mean, this person. Good yeah, going to this. there are plays at card shops. Going in there, five bucks. Knowing what it's selling for again, being aware that F one stuff is taken off. Going home, listen to, you know, and I like this. It says they're going for 300, put it a little less, right? Get somebody intrigued, like, ooh, these do a little bit more. Maybe I'll just go ahead and buy it now, risk somebody else buying it, setting a little bit below the market, taking in rather than putting up for 350 and hoping somebody offers three. I like the 285 to, you know, get it sold a little bit quicker. I like the play. I love the play. Um, I really do love the play because I do spend a lot of time in NFT land and like, this the the arbitrage on this 250 bucks is super real 
to just make in a day, like off of off of walking to someone's shop. And reason why I say I love it is because like in NFTs, the information and markets are so twenty four seven that like the second F one started bubbling up in Google Trends, there would be these sitting for five bucks, and people would just pummel it because they go and seek it out. Whereas there's a like all these local pop shops have there's arbitrage opportunities if you pay attention to internet consumer insights and everything a lot of sellers aren't i love this play i think the big thing is is right it's like the market changes so much this is why i always have arguments for dollar boxes and quarter boxes right the market changes so much we have thousands of cards out for sale there's no way we can go through every single box every single day week month and reprice stuff if you follow the market close enough or a market right? You know, Mac Jones, you go to a car shop today, there's a good chance you'll find a Mac Jones that's probably gone up 20% since he mm-hmm. got named the starter. If you believe in Mac Jones, there are plays out there for Mac Jones at a car shop that were probably priced two, three, four, five weeks ago. It just, it, you know, not, I can tell you, we don't have the time to reprice everything on a daily basis. So it makes sense if you've got, if you pay attention to the market, there are plenty of opportunities like this out there at shows, shops, or, you know, other card avenues yeah i love this play all right jay next one all right this mm. is from fainer J. it says bought this duncan kaboom for 75 dollars as one of my first buys on com c seller had it listed for 150 dollars and accepted an offer for 75 sent it off to ryan shop for grading for 20 dollars and got it back two weeks ago sent it off to consignment and sold monday for 711 dollars and 77 cents holy cow uh, send it off to free up funds for some more footy cards and stickers. All in with shipping, I was around $120 after fees and things, uh, fees and things, and I'm gonna make around $625 take home for a $500 profit. That's pretty good. Yeah, there's a lot of things I like about this. First, we had Justin Fainter, Eleanor's dad, college tennis coach. I'm hoping he made some net pro plays if i'd imagine he was dialed into some net pro plays especially because then he says i spend too much money second i love that he said he's he's slanging timmy d for some footy cards footy is going to continue to explode i mean cristiano ronaldo is now on manchester united we haven't touched on it we haven't talked about it messi is now in psg the premier league global soccer in general is Uh, but other than that, I'm actually not sure how I feel about selling this card. I think this is a hold. I don't hate, I don't hate $500 free uh, dollars. You can never hate $500 free dollars. You can never hate $500 free dollars. I will never hate $500. I like the idea. Uh, I like this play for the simple reason of, Hey, five, I made my, made my money, sell it, move on buy the next thing, flip that, make my money, move on. 10 years from now, if he does this and he continues to do this and flips the money, 10 years from now, he'll buy this Duncan and he'll buy a couple more of them because he'll have made enough money compounding the money over and over again to be able to buy the Tim Duncan later. I don't disagree. I don't disagree with that take. I would also say uh, iconic set, iconic player, not sure what type of inventory he's sitting on, but this would be in a 5% of my inventory that I just put away. If you're playing the long, like that's, I don't know, you know, uh, if all, if he's got a bunch of cards or whatever, to me, this card is a, is a long-term hold. That's just like, no, no, you can never talk down on making 500 bucks. Yeah. Either way, it's a good play. Yeah. Jay. All right. This is from LL cards. It looks like. Says blow is my player of the week submission. I bought a 2019 national exclusive Lamar Jackson pink eight of ten jersey number thrown into gold and silver packs. Not 100 percent positive on that. He is right. They were thrown into silver packs um, and gold packs. Uh, I purchased for 150 dollars after tax. Jeez, that's cheap. Um, felt like uh, a P- at the time of purchase, base concourse PSA nine was selling for 150 to 170. So I felt it was important to. I felt it was important to lose. Uh, at the time, the Ravens were just about to hit the playoffs before they were eliminated. I received an offer for $500 and declined in hopes that they would win the playoff game. After they lost, I took it off eBay until the past week. I listed for $700 offer and sold for $700 with an hour of listing. I find these cards 
possibly very controversial as it is a rookie put in a 2019 set and the true rookie tied I sold for 700 in July. So I love this play. I have the Miles Garrett one of one pink. Um, I have three LeBrons from select from this set. Um, Panini for two years in a row, put these in there. Actually, the first year they put them in there, I hit a Ronaldo out of eight from select, ended up selling it for nothing compared to what it's worth now. It actually got a nine five. Um, I like this. I actually think $700 is too cheap for a Jersey number out of 10 rookie. Um, I mean, what would a gold eight of 10 Lamar do? 4K, 3K? I don't know Lamar's market well enough. Any I guess? I have, I have a question though. So this is a 2019 or a 2018? Because this is 2019 when he bought it. 2018. It is a rookie card that Panini later put in sets. So they put them in like they made rookie. They made like rookie cards from or and base of vets. So like in 2008, like in 2018, you would have had a Tom Brady base, right? You would have had a Sam Darnold rookie. You would have had a whatever. It's a little confusing because it came out a full year later. They were printed as rookies. They were just thrown in different sets. They were thrown in national sets. National VIP packs, correct. Interesting. I like it. I like it a lot. I like him a lot, if I'm being honest. Lamar? Yeah. No J.K. Dobbins? They're sleeping on Lamar again. They are. I sense it. feel it in my bones. As we've gone forward in this episode, I feel it. We have at least four months of good Lamar until the playoffs come, and then we'll see. But until then, we have four full months of good Lamar. Yeah, I like the play. I like the jersey number play. Uh, look, I drafted J.K. Dobbins arguably a little high in my fantasy draft, and now he's out for the season um, because I've watched him since he was a young chap, a young Buckeye. Um, but at the end of the day, running backs are running backs, and he wasn't that special in the NFL. Bold take. Jay? There's like four or five running backs that actually matter. Okay. Right? Hmm. Rye really likes J.K. Dobbins. So of course he really one. likes J.K. Dobbins. Yeah, I just think L- Lamar Jackson is not an efficient enough passer. He's not a good enough passer to have a mediocre running back that doesn't do anything for you. Because then you just put 10 people in the box. Lamar, but like, but there's J.K. A thousand, Dobbins is a mediocre running back. Yeah, there's a thousand J.K. Dobbins. No, bro. And what world Gus Edwards is, J.K. is Dobbins, half right? as good as J.K. Dobbins. So okay, he averaged five yards a carry. That's a ridiculous thing to say, right? Oh, Ryan. <laughs> Play of the week from Boston Best One. Bought twenty of the tops now number sixty five Jude Bellingham with Erling uh, early Holland pushing for eighty dollars. Graded ten for twenty five dollars each. SGC equals. 250. Oh, so he paid twenty five dollars each at SGC. Sold eight for a total of three ninety three twenty three on eBay. Mercari sold two at a card share for sixty five bucks each. Total sold five twenty three twenty three. My grading cost plus tops purchase was three hundred and thirty dollars. My profit has been one hundred and ninety three dollars and twenty three cents. Kept twelve raw, still a grind, but have twelve in possession. In possession that should all grade like the others. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I feel like the the Bellingham and the and the Holland heat has cooled off, correct or no? Ty. Well, well, I think Bellingham a little bit. Holland still the super that dude, but it's going to play out as I believe I believe it's going to play out as I've long thought it's going to play out in that he's a Dortmund Dortmund doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. He needs to go to one of the top clubs. But he will, and, right? Like that's what's yeah, but wait, com- isn't that, He yeah, will, isn't that but he's else? not now for a year. And most everyone else, including Jude Bellingham, like Jude Bellingham is on a top national team. My man is going to have to fight for his life just to ever play in a major tournament. Yeah, for now. No, Again, he'll never help. No, he'll never he, play as a country in a, in a in a serious tournament. Okay. So like Euro Cup or World Cup, which really matters. Fair, okay. And then, yeah, and then the okay. If you're not going to do that, cool. Well, you got to be playing big time Champions League, the whole nine, and cool. You got to go to Real Madrid. But like you look at some players, and Neymar's never won one. 
It's not easy. I guess with PSG. So yeah, but Messi just won. Messi just won an international cup. Yeah, but isn't that your same argument for Holland? I'm saying he needs to go. Like it's going to be a year now. He yeah, but I'm just saying, right? Like going to draw, drawn out. His stuff got so crazy high. Yeah. I don't know. You're the not bu- in my so eyes. You're not ahead. buying Holland for tomorrow or for t- you know today. You're buying Holland for twelve months to eighteen months from now. But his prices or, are even. And my more point is, in eighteen months from now, there's going to be a World Cup that he's likely not playing in. He's not going to have won a Champions League, and he's going to have been a goal, good goal scorer for a German team. Eighteen that months from now, he'll be on a different team though, with yeah. with more potential, right? Yeah, not yeah. But you don't think so, Lou? Not necessarily. Now, he'll probably be on a new team. Not necessarily. Yes, but like not necessarily. And his prices are outrageously high. That's he's, all priced in. So like, what's he's the next priced move in? Yeah, he's priced in for the next next move already. So like, it's hard to figure out what his ceiling is. I don't know what his ceiling is. I guess is the problem. So it's hard for me to figure out what the prices are. What are they going to be? Like, is he going to have messy prices? That doesn't make any sense. Okay. You know. Good play, though. Jude Jude Bellingham bought twenty of them. This was twenty for so he paid twenty. He paid four bucks a pop. The picture was epic. This was definitely a big moment. Yep. The picture was a big thing. The two of them, Jude went over to the camera, did his thing, kept overall, made two hundred bucks. Still a grind. Twelve in possession. I only see the value of them actually going south. I like to play. I don't love the play comparatively to other plays, but yeah, it's a lot. I, I also will say, you know, we're not anyone to scoff at $200. It's a lot of work for 200 bucks. Yeah. And I, I like, I also think we have to be very realistic about the risk here, right? I'm very optimistic about SGC. I have for some time. This is an SGC 10 that sold for $55, which would yeah. imply a nine is likely selling for 35 and you're spending 30 to grade it. Mm-hmm. So the, if, you know, he says he graded eight of, again, I'm not trying to bash on anyone here, Boston best. I, I love the work, but if, you know, if you grade 10 of them and wait, he says he graded 10, he's got 12 in possession. That, that's he, he he kept 20. overall. That's 22, but he said he only bought 20. The math's a little odd here. No. Uh, oh yeah. It is a lot. So we're, we're too high. We got two randomly, but nonetheless, if you get a nine, five, the, the margins just are not there, right? You have to get 10s. Not saying he didn't get a lot of 10s. He could have, but I think there's a little bit of risk in this if you're getting 9s and 10s because a 9, you're definitely losing money. Yeah. You're losing money on a 9 for sure. You have to get a 9.5 to make a few dollars and you have to get a 10 to make something. So a yeah. little bit of risk on this play. We Yeah, it's a low margin situation. Yep. I love the, the card and picture though. The picture on the card. Next one, Jay. Ah. Says that card guy won on Twitter. Oh, my guy. This is our first one on Twitter in a while, I think, isn't it? It's a minute. It's been a minute. Yeah, it says pick this up in Chicago in a $10 box. Love the value. I ran book. into him in Chicago. It says uh, bought it with some others and got the price down to 7 8 bucks. Love this. Love Already love this. Uh, for the card, put it on. Buy it now after the show and sold last week for $80. Haven't gotten it shipped because I had... Held at work today late and couldn't make the post office, but notify the buyer. Small play, but a 10x play. Need that play of the week, W, Jason. LOL. Eh, Mm -hmm. Doing a little bit of like, hey, I need the the dub. Changing for the dub. He's been grinding to get a mention. So I got to respect it. Love it. Uh, But Patrick Wisdom, Lou, don't know much about him. He's He's a Cubs guy. All right, no, I think now he plays for the Rangers. I someone's gonna someone's gonna tell me one way or the other on that. I don't know. He's definitely on the Cubs still. Um, he had a good start to the season. He's like the new guy that the Cubs fans are excited about. So, it's but not play. bad for a first Bowman Orange. Out yeah, of 25 loved, for, yeah, I mean it's 2012, right? He was in the minors for a while. That's pretty good though. I love the value play. I love going through the ten dollar box, picking out six or seven of them, getting a little discount, forty five or fifty bucks on on six of them. Love that play. Um, so yeah, I, I like this, and I like how he's 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 upfront about it. Hey, I got held up at work. I haven't shipped it yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, respect. Right, sold it a couple. Haven't haven't shipped it yet. Um, Got to be straight up. 
I had to just go check. He did play for the Rangers. Now he's on the Cubs. I want to just make sure I was right about that. Yeah, good play. Is that it, Jay? I think that's it. I think that's. I know it. nothing yeah. about this play, by the way. So, yeah, keep moving. All right, this was first. Who's that in his uh, photo? It looks like a high school. It doesn't look like an NFL player. Yeah, yeah I agree. High school. Maybe he's also a player. Maybe. Uh, I'm picking Lamar. I'm picking Lamar. Because it, it, it's a different card. I don't necessarily mm-hmm. love the idea of a 2018 card being put in 2019 I'm, packs. I'm, up the, I'm taking the F1 grid play. Man, those yeah. are the two I'm debating between. We've sh- done the, we've done two. grid before though. We've done grid before. Man. Five bucks is pretty good, but yeah, five bucks is good. Man, this is tough. These are, the two, these are the two I'm debating between. I think it's Lamar. That's a serious amount of money. Yeah, I'm going with the Lamar. Let's go. Yeah, I'm going Lamar. I like the Lamar play. I like the jersey number. I like the pink national cards. I think those were super intriguing when they had them. Um, those are the only place to ever get them. So if you ever wanted to complete a rainbow, like it had to have been opened. Uh, like I'm, I'm very big on that. I love jersey numbered stuff. Um, I like the patience of holding it even after they lose. Um, yeah, I'm going with Lamar. Lamar is my winner. Is my winner. So Landon LL dot cards on IG with the dub this week. All right, so that is all we've got for play of the week. Again, play of the week is brought to you by eBay, your number one stop for all things cards and collectibles. All right, so big episode today. We got we got some releases this week. Nothing super, super crazy. Next week will be a much bigger release. The only thing this week that is of, of real note is going to be black football. Typically in the past, it's been like one box, five or six cards, multiple hits, a numbered card, et cetera. Um, so light week, light week. But yeah, lots to talk about. Good episode. We got, we, I mean, we talked about NFTs and F1 and soccer and football and Dallas and the dogs. I mean, what an episode. We love Penn, the Bulldogs. Penn State and Jared Zabransky? Jared Zabransky. I mean, the greatest college football player of all time. And you, I mean, I think it is the greatest college football player of all time. It's like the greatest new college football player of all time. It's the most exciting play of all time. Because like, well, I don't know. I mean, Doug flew. I mean, the band came on the field. Right? I don't know, man. Statue of Liberty is pretty crazy. I know, but the band was on the field. He ran okay. over the tuba player. Yeah, like, oh. the band thing's cool, but it's like, you know. I mean. The band's, the, the band's on the field. The band's on the field. Yeah, I, guess I mean, Ian Johnson scored, beat Oklahoma, and then proposed. I know the running straight to your shorty with the ball in hand. To I wonder the if game. they're still. I wonder if they're married. You think they had to break it off? Find out. I hope not. on the next episode of Car Talk. If they made a lot married. of money on autographs. See ya. That's all I got, guys. Peace. Peace. See ya.